Calling this meeting to order of the Street and Light Committee. We have six different issues to discuss. Uh, the first one is the 10th Street right away. Oh, excuse me. We're rehashing a little bit an issue that came to you guys before about the width of the right away adjacent and right at the town limits. So we're just approximately at the town limits. The width of the right away between Sharon Dalton's property and that which is owned by uh, Warren Dalton, which is outside of the town limits. Sharon's home is in town, and as, uh, we looked at it, and I think you guys made a recommendation, but I just wanted to make sure you guys understood, and when I commented to Sharon that it was not favorably uh, viewed by the committee, she said, well, do they understand that people are pulling down here and turning around and doing all the above things? And I said, well, I will remind them of that. The reason the right-of-way is wide there is, I believe it's Westwood Drive. Is that the one that uh, Walter Mack lives on? Mm -hmm. Westwood Drive. That road used to intersect there at 10th Street, okay, at a, more of a, like a 90-degree angle or at a 45-degree angle, and that's the reason for the width of the right-of-way. That turnaround section obviously could be used by equipment or anything like that that's at the town limit line may need to turn, but I think she's concerned, and um, I haven't received any police reports or anything like that, but she lives there, and I don't, of people turning around there, parking there uh, on the shoulder of the road. It is more right-of-way than the town specifically needs. We need a 50-foot right-of-way, and that's all we would be reimbursed for is the width of the pavement and a 50-foot right-of-way, and she wanted to make sure you guys understood the people were pulling down there, and I don't know if I explained it well enough when we were on our bus tour, but that is the issue. It, it is not right away that is required by the town or to be reimbursed by VDOT. So if you would be inclined to reconsider or take another look at it, uh, I think Sharon would appreciate that, and I told her uh, I would bring it to your attention that indeed um, the width of the right of way is not required by VDOT for reimbursement purposes. All right. Moving on. I believe it's about 70 feet wide, 75 feet wide. And the town only needs 50. We only get reimbursed for a width of 50 feet, and in, in, in each travel lane really is how we get reimbursed. It's more right away than we specifically need, yes. And if you look at it, and we can drive down there today, the width of the right away goes to a stob out in the yard in the grass, and it's pretty good distance off the shoulder of the asphalt. I think you guys saw that last time we were out there, so um, I'm not asking you to take any action. I'm not asking you to, to lean one way or the other. I did tell Sharon that I would make sure you guys understood the uh, that the town doesn't need the right of way, um, and she's asking that something be done. If the town does not abandon it, is the town interested in putting in some kind of Stop bars, parking bars, boulders, something that would prevent people from using the, the turnaround on pub public property. So you can think, you can do, we can ride back out there and take a look at it if you'd like. And uh, uh, But she is interested in eliminating people using that for private purposes. Okay. Next item. College Avenue, Alley Easement. I believe that there is a, uh, I don't know if Alley Easement is the correct term, but on College Avenue, you have a letter in your packet. Uh, Mr. Marshall lives at the corner, I believe, of 3rd Street and College, and he has requested in writing that the town abandon or vacate a portion of Alley uh, behind his property specifically. Um, Doris Wynn is here to, to maybe speak to that. I have spoken to both parties, and uh, I'll let Doris present her position. You have Mr. Marshall's position that he would like to do that. The act of uh, ordinance of vacation, uh, the adoption of such, would give half the alley to one property owner and half to the other. Mr. Marshall will certainly be the recipient on his side, uh, but Ms. Wynn also owns not only adjacent to him on college, where her home is, but she also owns the grassy area, if I'm correct, that, that fronts on 3rd Street. Okay, so she would be the affected party on the rear of Mr. Marshall's house. So um, both parties have spoken about it. Both parties have put in writing some of their thoughts, and Doris is here to discuss it. I 
the, the reason it's of concern, there was a one, at one time I was considering that because I thought it probably would be, it pro there probably would be no issue. But in view of what's happening uh, with the assembly center, which is very close to, cl close to us, and the, I own lots one through 14, which front third street, lots 15 through uh, 28, to my knowledge was, and maybe still is part of the uh, property uh, that's owned by what used to be the Virginia United Methodist Assembly Center. So in view of not knowing what's going to happen with that property and possibly not knowing what's going to happen with those lots, lots uh, uh, the wooded lots that front uh, Hungry Town slash Fourth Street, I think that probably we might be um, doing something we would regret later because we don't know what's going to happen with those lots. That might affect what happens with lots one through 14. I don't know. I do know that my house, which is the old Barrow Place in the middle of Third Street, is very close to Mr. Marshall's house, much closer than it is to Mr. Childress's house on the corner of Fourth and Fourth College slash of uh, College Fourth Street slash Hungry Town. And because of that, and because of, of my house being so large, I would, I'm, I'm afraid that if emergency vehicles need to come around to the back, such as the fire department, that that would also affect Mr. Marshall's house too, because if the fire ever, uh, and I'm doing everything I can to prevent that and have since 1984, since I've been living there, um, of doing everything to make sure it's fire safe and everything else, but you just don't know what will happen, and I'm afraid emergency ve vehicles may need to come through there, depending on what happens with with uh, uh, possible future development of the wooded area or what might have to happen with my lots. And I have had a survey done, and I filed it recently, in which I have uh, included with lots 32 through 36 on which my house sits. I've included lots 13 and 14, for protection also of that property because I felt like it, that it might be necessary in the future. I don't know whether I will be there or someone else will but we, because we never know. But um, I also would like to state that I own the majority of the property in that block. Um, lots 32 through 36 plus 1 through 14. The Assembly Center owns um, I think it's 14 lots also, if that's who still, who still owns it. And the other two um, own their house and the property on which it sits. And I like being a good neighbor. I stay in the house to be a good neighbor a lot of times, <laughs> which we all do. But um, I just um, felt like I needed to um, tell you all why I would be in opposition to that. I think that emergency vehicles may be a real issue. And I thank you for listening. I think um, most alleyway vacations are not terribly controversial. I don't know if controversy is the correct term here. I think we have property owners that have different interests or different requests. And before I do so, or advertise to do this, I'd like to get some direction from you guys because I don't think that uh, um, both parties are in accord with the closure of the alley. And that, by the way, that is a 10-foot alley, if I'm not mistaken, the one that goes perpendicular is a 20-foot. Okay. I have not done the research, but that may very well be the case. Yes, ma'am. A um, little guidance. Do you want to advertise it and have a public hearing and see what happens or would you like to hold it this time but I think these things are usually pretty simple you know get you know property owners that come to me and say hey let's do this and rarely do we have uh, opinions that are not in accord so uh, what do you want to do sure mm -hmm. Our speeding problems with uh, speed limit signs where our police department can get out there with the ticket book and change your driving habits just as well, but there's two different methods of doing it. 
I think uh, Mr. Marshall and, and Ms. Wynn would have to come into agreement on what to be done, quite frankly. There's a strip of town-owned property between their properties. But it looks like the way, what we're looking at now, either way we go, is going to make somebody very happy. One or the other is not going to be pleased with the right. resolution. Is and that may another, be... Is there another solution to do this? No, no. Talk to Mr. Marshall and see if there's something else. How about putting big stones out in the, in yeah. the, in the place? How would we know when the hell we know what's going to happen with well, we don't, and that's a problem. It's a dilemma both ways. Uh, I mean, what, what, what you don't know, they don't know on the other side, or vice versa. Uh, I'm just, Mr. Chairman, I'm just not sure that we, that we know enough right now that we can set ourselves up and say, you're right and you're wrong. At least I don't. Yeah, I, don't. Right. I, I feel if I did, I would be. Uh, I think the two options are. I would, I would be taking one of the moves. Do nothing, but or hold a public hearing and advertise a public hearing and let both parties or any affected party come in and say their piece. And you have to do that anyhow to, to abandon any portion of town property. It would have to be done by ordinance of vacation, which requires public hearing and advertising. Well, what is that going to solve? I think you may very well vote it up or down, or at least the full council voted up or down. Uh, but I do think you're still going to have. But you're voting under the same dilemma you would be if we try to make a decision. Two parties that don't agree. That's right. Uh, uh, you're thinking one of those moves. It may be the correct solution to just do nothing at this point, and maybe Mr. Well, I'm Marshall will I'm come around. Almost at the verge of recommending that we, that we table this vote. Period of time, but I again that seems to lean in one direction, not the other. You may uh, want to ask Mr. Chairman. You may want to ask Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tucker, Mr. Tucker. Mr. Tucker. Can I ask the question? Sure. Can I ask the question? Go ahead. If, um, if, if you vacate it, it has to be vacated the whole length. You can't just give Mr. Uh, Marshall five feet, right? No, I can't say that's the case. I think the town may have the ability to sit back and, and differentiate exactly what it wants to uh, release or, or vacate. That may be a legal question, but uh, uh, no, I think the town can say we can, uh, we're can. we interested in vacating five feet of this property. That may be a solution for him at uh, Satisfactory. What I was wondering is but the just the five feet behind his property, or will it, would it have to go all the way? Mm -mm. The no, I'm certain that you don't have to go all the way through. If you and your adjacent property owner at 310 were disagreeable to it, I, I, I'm certain that the town could sit back and say, we will abandon this section of alley. I'm certain the town has done a portion of that before. It's undeveloped. It's unused by the town. It's not like we drive garbage trucks through there or anything like that. But, yeah, I think the town does have the option of abandoning or vacating that portion that they choose. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken with to Mr. Marshall? Of course, is undeveloped as well, and it's been vacated since 1984. 
of the radiators being unused. Table? Of, of doing stuff, of us doing something yeah, we need to, to look at it. Need to look at it. Was there a motion to table it? I would have taken that motion. Yeah, we can uh, do that until we look at it. And, and table it until more study or more information is available. Okay. Second? On the third There you go. Three? Aye, aye, aye. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh, uh. Wayman Mitchell is here to share with you his thoughts on Spring Hill Road, and, um, and I think some other folks are here too. Page of your packet. Yeah. Is there original date we asked for this to be done? Hmm? Is there original date that we asked for this to be done? The original date? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was in January, wasn't it? Could very well be. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we're, we're talking about the third turn lane. I'm sorry. <laughs> the turn lane for uh, for coming into the church from the street, from the highway. And it starts out here at the uh, Bracco Road, where the underpath is. From there to the turn into Spring Hill, it's about a mile. And there's pre three speed limits. It goes from 35 to 45 to 55 up to the, chair, up to the church turn. And what we want to do is try to get a turn lane in because we're getting more busy now. We, get, we have more members. And there needs to be a turn lane there because it, it's, we have, when, I, when I go to church, i got to go down the road and then the highway and got to start slowing up about halfway because the cars come behind you. They want to pass or they want to get you out the way so they can go. But anyway, we go down and have to make a, almost a complete stop to make that right turn because it's like a U-turn when you make it, like a like a V, like to get on the, on the road, Spring Hill Road. So we thought it was a turn lane from both sides. There's on the, on the uh, west, on the north side of that, it's it's almost enough space there to make a line, third lane, another lane coming into town. But going this way, it's going to be something like We'll need about uh, three or four feet to add it to that to make a turn lane there. And, and, and because we're getting a lot of members and getting a lot of traffic coming in and out of there every day, we're, we're averaging 100 people a day, I'll put it that way. That's, that's, that's low. And we thought we needed to do something about that. Want the other one to make, so about the other one too, also? Pardon? About the other part also? About the emergency? Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> If you look at our map on the, which says where the church sits, right in front of the church there's an old road used to go through a bridge across there, run across the railroad track. In 1970 something, they, they banned the road and tore the bridge down. What, what map? I'm on the ground here, listen. Let's see where it says the Spring Hill Baptist Church. Turn to And right, right here, the river runs right here. Yeah. See, they, they didn't have they didn't that one added to this. But then when the river runs here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, we, and they, there was a bridge and they tore it down, so we have no out, out to come out of there. And so we were talking about if we had an, some kind of emergency that would drop, would not stop Spring Hill Road, block it off, that we could have no way out of there. We're trapped in. So the pastor suggested that we have a do we have a, a extended road past Spring Hill, go across the track, and put a, a, a locked br uh, gate there, and only use time for emergency? I don't know how we could do that, but you could probably explain it better than I could. I think all things are possible. Yeah, I do too. Want to be an optimist all the time? But it, I don't know if anybody else has worked with the railroad. It can be a real challenge to put a crossing in on the railroad. But, uh, the railroad, we just, we just got this idea. That's not that. Yeah. I don't want to quash something, but the railroad can be a little picky about we've crossing. Been early, we've been early, we've I, I think a bridge is cost prohibitive, certainly. But um, a Ford or whatever the proper term is, like a rubberized crossing going across there, I think that uh, it's just going to require some uh, railroad approval, which I think can 
not necessarily be a no answer, but certainly a lengthy process to get an answer. But, uh, yeah. you know, we can certainly write them a letter on behalf okay. of the church if so requested. But my expectations going into the request would probably be low. The uh, turning lane, I don't think it's an outrageous request. I don't, no offense, I don't think it would meet the VDOT standards for the construction of a turning lane. They would have to approve it, right? Uh, they would have to approve it if we intend on being reimbursed for it. Okay? It would be town money. I don't think VDOT would put any money. The town would have to use its resources to build. It's actually about 11 feet. It would taper in, and the width of a traditional traffic lane is about 11 feet wide. Okay? Like a parking space. And, uh, for how long? Um, I don't know. I think there's warrants, you know, the VDOT could tell us how long and how far, and uh, just have VDOT do a traffic study. My recommendation to you would be have VDOT come to have the town manager write a letter to VDOT asking for a study to see how many cars are going in there a day, okay? Does it meet the warrants? Would VDOT pay any portion of it, and what would be the recommended? And what cost of it? Well, well, the cost of it. I don't know if VDOT will give us a specific cost, or if i got to go to B&B &B or an engineer, but I can get a cost based on what VDOT would say this would be warranted. All right. I don't think based on the travel we have now, I, I, I see why we need one, but it's going to be eventually. It's going to be more limited. We're going to, we're going to uh, do some things at the church. We're going to put some sprinkle, you know, what did I, what did I say you call it? I think the thing to do would be ask VDOT to do a formal traffic study right there. Count the traffic. It's slowing things down. It doesn't, it's bureaucratizing a bit, but if we're going to ask them to pay for it, at least they will have that. And they may come back to you and say, it doesn't meet the warrants, but if the town wants to do it, it is our street. And if the town chooses to do it, you are entitled to do it. Okay, but I don't think VDOT's going to give you resources to do it. You'd have to do it with local, local fund. And my recommendation would do make a traffic study for the intersection. One day, someday, someone is going to develop the gravel property. Someday, yeah. and whatever we'll that too. Yeah. whatever we do, logically should line up close to that intersection, and, and uh, whatever potential develops development could go on right there. But that's the thing to do: just get VDOT to do a study at the intersection. They may charge us a little something for the study, but I'll find that out too. Okay. Make a motion to find out how much it'll cost for okay. us to do the DP dot study. Traffic study. Traffic study. And I'll bring it to council with a cost estimate from VDOT of what their study would cost. Yes. Agreeable? Agreeable? Is there a, All party is there a second? Second was a monitor second. Second. Okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. Right. Okay. All right. Do we need to ride out and look at these other two? Yeah. I'll give you a primer on the North Main Street sidewalk. As you may or may not know, I think Ben is talking about doing a, um, a significantly um, different or newer car dealership on the site of where his existing dealership is. Um, he intends on tearing that building down and. Across the street. Hmm? Just temporary. He's going across the street in a uh, like an office trailer temporarily. He's going to close that across the street on a permanent. On a permanent basis, I don't think he'll have cars stocked there. He'll still own the property and is entitled to do that. But the new construction will be on the between Napa and and Slippy, where his existing building is. Okay. Um, if you go out there, he asked me to come by one day, and indeed there is a pretty yucky looking sidewalk in front of his place, and there's a entrance that goes in there that's not used unless I guess he's backing a car in there or something like that but I really don't think it gets used on a regular basis if you go to the intersection of uh, Man Street and take a right and go down there there's fairly new valley gutter that's in pretty good condition okay so Ben asked if the town would consider replacing at the town's cost that sidewalk in the valley gutter my indication to him was the valley gutter is fine, so I don't think that the town necessarily should eat that cost to dig out and replace based on his new project's demands. But the sidewalk in front looks pretty bad, and I'd like to carry y'all out there. And I told Ben, and Ben's agreed. He said, oh, absolutely. This needs to be a, an action of council because he's on council for obvious reasons. And uh, so we'd like to take a ride out North Main Street, look at that sidewalk. It's in uh, 1 to 10. It's probably a 4. 
I would say. I think it's passable, but certainly not for um, aesthetically. It certainly doesn't meet the, the requirements of a new building. Okay. I'd have to go back and measure it. I don't know the exact measurements and see if he wants to put replace the uh, driveway that's in there. I don't think putting that driveway back in there is necessary. I think it's still, still going to be curb and gutter and straight up sidewalk. And I can tell you what the uh, replacement cost, but I can't tell you the demo cost. I'd have to get Jason Walker to tell me exactly what the demolition cost would be, unless we demolish demolish it myself ourselves. I would think from about where Dinks is, okay. where that spray paint area is, it looks pretty good. And that would take it, I believe it should, if we're going to replace it, it should be at town cost. If we're going to do that, it should be to the corner of Main Street. Anything on the Main Street side, I think, should be the responsibility of, uh, of Greens. Because that, that is working. That was actually put in since, since I've been around Blackstone. That was probably in the 90s when that valley gutter was put in. They may, yeah, they may very well. If he wants to put that back in, then we would need to put in a new entrance. The entrance is not usable if you replace the sidewalk in the curb and gutter. Again, I bring up, do we know enough now to reach any sort of a mm -hmm. form of decision? Do you want to replace what is existing? Well, That's the request. It was very simple. We have we have a cost estimate. We have bid out the uh, construction of a driveway. We have a price for the driveway. If he chooses to put the driveway back, great, then it'll be based on that price. If he chooses to put sidewalk and curb and gutter back, we'll have that. We have that price too. So it's all priced out. We just got to get a confirmation of what he wants to do. And the demolition is the the one um, uncertainty. And if the town does it, then we'd have to bill him for our time and labor. If a contractor would do that, that is a separate cost. Well, maybe Mr. Green will be there when we ask him. But the cost is a linear foot cost, and we can I can certainly bring the, the file with me, and I'll, we'll go down there and measure it, and I'll tell you exactly what it's going to cost. I understand. Mr. Chairman, uh, that's all I need to do, Governor. All you need to do? Okay, so what's the news? Do I have beat up your traffic study? We're going to have council ask. I'm up front, but that's going to come to council meeting to prove that. That'll be on the February 26th meeting okay, agenda. All right. and, yeah. then, and then the, and then the uh, railroad letter to the railroad. We'll write a letter to the railroad. Okay, yeah. all right. Thank you. Okay. The cost of it is one thing. I think it's the philosophy. Do you want to pay for the replacement of the curb and gutter and sidewalk or potentially a driveway as well? Or should that be an expense borne by the construction cost, okay? Because I don't think it's going to be radically different cost-wise, whether it's a driveway or curb and gutter and sidewalk. I mean, I can tell you to the dime what that is. The question is, should the town bear cost or not bear cost for any of it? A question we need to ask ourselves mm -hmm. is if it weren't for the new construction, will we even be considering replacing the sidewalk? Probably not. Yeah, in reality. I mean, we all know that it probably needs to be replaced and it's probably chunky. Is it the worst? We have to decide is this something that we need or something that we want. Yeah, I think more so than whether a driveway is X number of dollars and curb and gutter is X number of dollars. I can tell you that, but I think philosophically you got to decide. I don't think the Main Street side should be the responsibility of the town. It's working perfectly. It's working well. The fact that Mr. Green's on the council mm -hmm. really has, has or should have no bearing on what the decision is. It's, it's, you know, he has mm -hmm. to be a good friend of mine, but on the other hand, uh, our responsibilities are separate and distinct from that. Right. I'm asking you for your guidance on that particular request. Depending on how much ice is accumulated under it, the sidewalk had raised. 
and um, I've never been very graceful in any way, but I, I ended up hitting my toe, toe my shoe on what had raised up, and I, I took a nosedive. They tell me my nose was not broken, but it still has a bump on it here somewhere, and I had trouble breathing, took trouble breathing at, out at certain times. But what, what I was, and, and I, I broke my glasses and had to have an emergency room, and I think the uh, insurance with the DML mm -hmm. uh, covered that. I just turned in my glasses or whatever, uh, in the row of uh, Palmer was the town manager. But I, when, when you said something earlier at the very beginning about the sidewalk being chunky, would it be possibly in, in the town's best interest to, if it, if it needs to be replaced? Oh, yeah. I, for legality purposes, if it's going to have to be replaced originally anyway? Well, I don't want to be flipping about people slipping on sidewalk because it happens regularly, but it's not one of those things that we have found that specifically the town is held liable by our or other carriers. Um, now, if we know about a specific problem and we neglect to do something with it, that's a different situation altogether. But um, we get crummy looking sidewalk in a lot of places in town. And, this is some of it. And the way I handle curb and gutter and sidewalk requests is if we talk about a project, what we ultimately want to do, then we do those kinds of things. But outside of any project or planning, like on South Main Street, I came to you guys and said, um, this one probably needs to happen because the request was made and we have two requests. Remember High Street and South Main both came up at the same time. I hadn't planned on that. You guys, if you had seen a crew show up on South Main Street, everybody would have been like, what are they doing? So I think we're not treating Mr. Green differently in this case because the replacement or a significant construction project that you guys didn't know about, I don't think it's fair to you guys when somebody calls you and asks you what's going on. Okay. Now, I think everybody knows we're working on Brunswick Avenue. I'm going to come to you on the 26th of February and present to you what we're going to try to accomplish on Amelia Avenue with water and sewer replacements and curb and gutter and sidewalk. And we're also going to ride out there today and take a look at it. Um, we also have a curb and gutter section that I think we need to address on Tavern Street behind Bobby's, the former Memorial Center site. And those are the things I want to talk to you guys about. But I don't think it's fair that I get into appreciable projects. Now, fixing a lip or in front of Polly Watkins' house that she may have tripped on or something like that. No, I don't come to you too terribly much on that. But an appreciable project, this is not going to be a cheapo. This is going to be digging on Main Street, and this is going to be pricey. I think you guys need to at least take a look at these. So is the request because he's on council? It's a little more sensitive for me, certainly. It's sensitive for Ben. He doesn't need to be or anybody accusing him of, of something going on that, that council didn't know about or voted on. But something like this I would probably t bring to council regardless, whether it was Mr. Green or not Mr. Green. Okay. Just like we did on South Main in front of Happy Cafe and Nottoway Avenue, or uh, Nottoway Office Services. I'm missing one. Lindenberg Avenue extended. You've spoken with Charlie? Right. And then there's a question on should the traffic or the speed limit be reduced? He said there was no speed limit it's not at, all. at all. And it, is it appropriate to make it 15 miles an hour on that section? Very little traffic on that section. And uh, we'll take a ride down there too and pick to see if you want to do that. And if we're going to put a sign on it, should we make it a 15 mile an hour speed limit as well? So we're going to take a ride to North Main Street sure. in front of Ben's. We're going to take a ride to Tavern Street, and I'd like to take a ride to uh, Lunenburg Extension. Extension and Amelia Avenue. Those are the four places I'd like to go. Good. All right. Thank you. And anybody's allowed to ride with us. It's a public meeting in the bus if you'd like to.